it live? Where's we are there? live. All right. So, Levi, I had a couple questions for you before we got started today. Okay. I know I have my random story, too. Oh, so yes, yes. Do. Yeah. Actually, let's start with your random story. <laughs> it's so random. I kept it in the back of my head. I'm like, oh, this would be great on the podcast. But basically, so I was reading on Reddit last night of all reputable places. Uh, I can't remember what thread it was, but, oh, it was because Craig Jones had that video recently. Like, he was basically saying that Sambo was not, like, a real martial art. He'd take it from judo and jujitsu and things like that. and Doing a sassy take. Yeah, and obviously he's got such dry humor mm -hmm. that ever, if everyone who knows him knows that the way he talks is just super dry. But anyways, started an argument in the comment section. <laughs> of, there's a lot of people that go, judo is the source of all jujitsu. And then some people are like, actually, judo was invented until 1880-something. and actually, about wrestling? Jitsu and wrestling and all that stuff. Someone had, there's like a funny story that, is that I always mess up his name, Jigaro Kano? Kano? Honestly, I don't know the name, so Jigaro if it's Kano, wrong, yeah. I won't even know. Jigaro Kano, go, I yeah. thought, was like the founder of judo or Ooh. something like that. Jigaro Kano. Very, like I said, the this, this story is going to be maybe not true or maybe not false. It's just somewhere, but I thought it was very entertaining. Jigaro Kano sent Mitsuya Maeda, who is a person who taught Carlos and Elio Gracie jiu-jitsu, okay. sent him over to the United States in the area to basically teach the ways of judo. Similar to Horian going up to the United States with Ellie Gracie. And the story I heard was that Mitsu Maeda then was going some parts of the United States and was coming across lumberjacks. Okay. And was challenging them to fight or grapple or wrestle. And he would purposely sandbag and let them beat him. And he goes, ah, how about double or nothing? And then he'd destroy them and, oh, take, man. and take their money and head out. <laughs> I was like... Oh, what a what a just a horrible tactic to be like, oh my gosh, you're so great and powerful. Let me do it one more time. It's like a classic time. like pool shark move. I wonder if you'd like sandbag still though. So it looks like you just happen to get it. Because yeah. they have a crew of dudes and then they their guy wins that are like, Oh yeah, woo. It sounds like someone who worked before. And then because <laughs> then what if you just go and throw just a ridiculous throw? Like you're just like a huge I epon. I guess it depends on what your mode of victory is. So if you just barely look like you squeezed out a throw. Yeah. And then I maybe know. they're like, no, we want this double or nothing. And that was so close. And I'm like, all right, let's do this again. And all of a sudden they get somewhat contesting and then throw it and go, oh, guess I got lucky. Because they've got axes, Levi. Mm -hmm. They got axes. I suppose brave judo for, doesn't work against that's axes. That's brave for him to do that, to go and take money and just run. But he's basically pool sharking judo in the United <laughs> States. So like I said, not sure how true or false it is, but I thought it was a very entertaining story. And then apparently he met up with Carlos Gracie in the, not Carlos, Gustav, Gustavo Gracie in what the Caribbeans name. or whatever. But do you know Gracie? Do you know the origin of the Gracie? Like when you think about all the various uh, Brazilian names in Brazil, like Gracie doesn't seem to fit. Do you know the origin? I don't know all the other names of Brazil, to be honest with you. It's just like uh, <laughs> Galvão and Silva and this kind of this Ribeiro. And Versus like Gracie sounds like Scottish. Gracie. It is Scottish. Oh, okay. Yep. So Interesting. Scottish origin. So he came over from Scotland. From Scotland. Scotland. That's pretty cool. He mentioned Brazilian instructionals, which is a Scottish. Oi. Oh, it was like that guy. Which you know, was, yeah. was a Scottish, but it was Irish. Yeah, he's was funny. Like, that was was so he Irish or is he Scottish? I don't know, honestly. Glasgow? What's Glasgow? Is that, you're talking about the body lock guy? Yeah. It's Glasgow. He's funny. It's Glasgow, Ireland. Dude, I'm I am. Sorry, everybody. I'm so American <laughs> like this. My, my, my geography with like cities is ridiculous. Dickens yeah, it was, a, B it was a uh, BJ Globetrotters one. That yeah. was hilarious. He's just, I'm sorry if I swear, like my mother watching. My mom's going to watch this. Watch this, yeah. I thought he was funny. That sounded a little Beatles-esque. He like, uh, I thought it was funny too, is you got to get intimately close. <laughs> yeah, intimately like close to your partner. <laughs> is it all right if I get intimately close with you? All right. Oi, I feel, good. I feel I like know. you'd have a very close Beatles impression. A Beatles? Uh, I yeah. can't even think of how to do that right now. Like a Liverpool Paul, accent. Hey, Paul. Oh. Hey, Ringo. Hey, Ringo. Yeah, it'd hey, be Paul. like a... Uh, hey, Paul. What was that? Walk Hard, that movie? They have like Jack Black being the Beatles. Oh, and, that's like, right. Justin Long and stuff. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's they, so classic. they were all, they were tripping. Yeah. <laughs> like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> there was a bit actor Simon Pegg did where he said, there's four Beatles live in your mouth. And he says different parts of your mouth. So he like oh. talks off the side of his mouth. It talks behind. It talks up at close and talks uh, in front of your mouth. <laughs> like he did Simon all four of them so good. in different parts. so creative. That's my party trick. He talks like four Beatles in your mouth. Yeah, uh, that's funny. The four it's Beatles. Like, 
pretty good. I like it. Anyways, random story. Yeah, that's this. cool. That's funny. Cool that's shark in ju- judo. Yeah, judo sharks. Judo I don't know sharks. if you could pull that off with here with jujitsu. Also with can't. internet. Yeah. Before, like, oh, I, I think about <laughs> this topic a lot where, actually not a lot, but a decent amount. More than the Roman Empire? You know what's funny? Kayla asked me that question, and I'm not on TikTok or anything, yeah. so I didn't know. And I was like, <laughs> I literally gave like the same response as all the other guys. Like, I stopped, thought about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe like weekly? And then she, she, yeah, no, she didn't film oh. it. Oh. No, I was in the shower, actually, when she asked me. I was me. thankfully <laughs> but, prepped for it. I remember seeing it, so I was ready for No, I like, was completely open to just be like, oh, and then I, I gave it a, a legit thought. And she's dying thinking that somehow you think about it. And then it. she's like, how do you think about a weekly? And I'm like, yeah. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. He's the man. And he's a lot of ancient Rome. We, and we, uh, yeah, there was a lot of good history there. <laughs> it's just, I laughed so hard when she started showing me these other videos. I would imagine she Ro- have videotaped Rome it is more uh, Greco Roman wrestling. I don't know. Then there was Pancras. Pancras? Oh right? my gosh. Pancras. Which was like. Pancras was more like, like the... early MMA, but mm-hmm. no rules. There's some nasty Pancras. stories from that. Yeah. Sharp fingernails and stuff. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty gruesome. Bad. Yeah, that was back during the pentathlon, which was a five event. F- was five? What's the ten? A decathlon. Yeah, t- de- t- uh, yeah decathlon's ten, the but pent- five. The yeah. pentathlon, I believe it was combat. I think there was like a standing broad jump, a throw, and I think maybe like a race or two. You would own that standing jump. Oh, thank you. That was so weird last night. I, I was actually why. trying to show you guys how bad I was at jumping. <laughs> and you looked like you levitated off the floor. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's, funny. That's what me and Jordan were just like. I uh, know. It was funny. I was just like, see, look how bad I am at jumping. And I jumped and then, because that's not Did as Did you ever high. jump in a basketball? Grab the rim or something? Oh, yeah. I could slap my wrist against it. Okay. You know what? I never could dunk. I never really gave it a good try, though. It feels like you should be high enough to do that. I don't know. It's tricky. You got to get the ball there. I'm like terrible at you basketball. Get the ball. <laughs> I have to hold something. Yeah. And bring it there, I, And too. I couldn't do like a two-handed <laughs> slam dunk kind of <laughs> thing. Yeah, I didn't have that type of... I did play like a couple pickup games. Okay. And I do remember there was one time, though, that I had like my best jump ever. They got into it. I was actually defending. Oh. And I like jumped and my hips were higher than the guy's oh. head. Whoa. I was like, whoa. Jump on top of him. It was high Flying school, triangle. <laughs> Now, that's why I do martial arts, because I'm not good at any other sports. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I actually just like martial arts the most. But it's the one worth it. My buddy, who's, he wrestled in high school, and he would joke around about that. That He was like, the whole wrestling team, if you try to have them do any other sport, oh, it sure. was just like terrible to watch. But then if it was like running or wrestling, they did really well. Which is the complete opposite of my experience. I remember having a full classroom of football players and basketball players and watching them shrimp. Because I had a class that I did the jiu-jitsu movements. No, I'm talking about just if you grab a sport person. I know. And throw them into another sport. Oh, oh, in general. I thought you were just saying wrestling. Yeah, no. Like, any sport. Yeah. So if you give, put a ball in our hand. Levi, do you know how to throw a ball? No. I barely, Actually, I have really bad shoulders. I don't think I could throw a ball hardly I'm at all. terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. I could accurately throw a ball maybe across the mat. There was a video. The mat's not long, I don't folks. know if they took an NBA team or something like that, and they did like a jiu-jitsu class. See, some, that's different. Some place. different. But it different was, they movement. were all like awkward and weird and things like that. But it makes sense. You spend all your time in one certain movement pattern. Like, how do you expect someone to jump into something else and be that's somewhat right. okay with it? I have know? a hot take, actually, before Ooh. we would get going here. Hot take. Uh, so a lot of people would say, oh, do you not have good hand-eye coordination, Matt? Because you can't throw a ball great. And I'm like, no, I have a great hand-eye coordination. I think I can I do just, that. The only thing is... Yeah. Why are we using the ball as the ultimate test of hand-eye coordination? What, what's... I can grab your wrists. I can hit a mat. I can punch really decently oh, that's well. True. That's See, true. but they always... And then here's the funny thing. The They'll say, oh, you're not very athletic. And it's like, what do you mean? I can run and jump and change, yeah. change levels and stuff. I'm decently... I'm, I'm a normally athletic person. Mm-hmm. And because when you do combat sports, the only thing is all the activities that people judge you by athleticism are not combat adjacent except for maybe football if you're playing defensively sure on the defensive side of things because Mm. think about this say you're like good at baseball and then that means you're probably decent at softball it means you're probably decent at anything you have to throw a ball sure right Mm -hmm. and then maybe even badminton because you're connecting one item to another like tennis badminton yeah there's a lot of yeah they're all ball related things and you get your brain gets used to being able to adjust to a brain Mm -hmm. versus what if we flip the paradigm and said almost everybody wrestled did some type of maybe track and field, and then did some type of combat activity. Oh, yeah. Now you would start to go, okay, you're pretty good at this. And say someone reversed was like, I like basketball, which is cool. Yeah. But then you put them into wrestling, <laughs> and they're just like getting just destroyed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And they're sorry. like, oh, sorry, he's not very athletic. He's, he's never athletic. Yeah. He just goes and plays with his ball. <laughs> yeah. Go bounce your ball, sir. 
But like, what's funny, it's just interesting that as a society, we judge athleticism based, or not always, but like, I feel like that was reversed. based on that. Let's go back to the Roman Empire. I think that was reversed. I think that's like, yeah. Can you run? Because you I, can't fight, you better be able to run. But it, <laughs> I've actually heard this one before. But it's, it's just but yeah. interesting to think it's, you didn't see maybe discus? Discus maybe being something like you throw something far? Yeah, yeah. The discus was a like, part of the pentathlon. Yeah, I was trying to think of what was more of an it's cool too, origin you, type thing. You can whip the th- crap out of that. One of the guys yeah. that was on the track oh, team, power. he was actually one of the coach. There's like a student coach in like, yeah. how, like their senior year trying to mm-hmm. help other kids. He was like maybe six foot two and like a hundred and forty five pounds, and he wow. and okay. he could crush the discus. Was that just like a leverage? leverage. Yeah, he had just thing? like for like high school Momentum. standards, he had a pretty decent throw. He wasn't like a Waitman's. He wasn't like the guys who do really well in the discus are obviously a little bit bigger. So and wonder more muscle, the difference between discus and then the shot put. Shot put, you got to explode. It's like. You got to nestle it in the or neck. I should say like, way more explosive. They're crazy explosive. Oh, so, so you have to be like really stocky. It helps. Yeah, the, the, the guys oh, who are really good weird. at it are built. Distance super wise, built, super strong. wise, you need more of a windmill type thing. Yeah, long arms probably help. Huh. I think it's I the same as like time javelin. I saw discus actually, actually javelin too. Javelin. Javelin, 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 javelin like gotta combat. Get, yeah, whip. I always remember that with the movie Troy. With yep. it was Brad Pitt Brad running, Pitt. and he guy just throws a javelin. <laughs> he's oh, deflects it, then he's Superman punches him with the spear. Oh yeah, good times. Yeah, he's oh, good times. yeah. He, oh, he doesn't he do that with a sword. He like gets him in the neck. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, well, he yeah. like sides and just gets him right in the back of the neck. Yeah, that's why weapons were created, folks. And he just keeps walking past them like, for us medium sized folk, <laughs> or else we just lose all the time. That's true. We need weapons. That's why hands. bow and arrows? Bow and Got arrows. Our are hands, cool. man. Got our hands is all we need. Yeah, I'd rather have mine holding a weapon if I was in that scenario. <laughs> All right, we'll decide which weapon that'll be next time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're off the rails and we're like 15 <laughs> so minutes in. So off the rails. In. Okay, so here, I have a question for you, Levi. Go for it. Do you remember any video games that had cheap characters with like, cheap oh, moves you could play? Cheap moves. Let's see what's here. I don't think cheap. Were you were you, you and your friends just went okay, after a while? Went, okay, we're I've, not using I've this I've got guy. one. Here's one that just came to mind. So Donkey Kong. Yeah. Not the video game, but the character in Super Smash Bros. Yeah, because he could throw the thing on your, throw you on his back. Yeah, and you just walk. He'd walk off yeah. the, the ledge. Yeah, if it's you were playing like, stock where you had only yeah, so many lives, you, know, so many lives, you yeah. just could just walk right Kirby off. Kirby could do something similar. Oh, Kirby can swallow too and just walk himself off too. Who I say is the cheapest character in Super Smash Brothers Melee, though. Ready, Falcon? No, uh-huh. no, not Captain Falcon. <laughs> that no, was the best move. That ever. one's awesome, Falcon. Falcon. Oh, that one's cool. But see, that one takes time to charge up. I know, so but I it's fair. I rather it's take fair. it. Yeah, it's good. I would say Martha's. He's got the longest reach in the game. He's really Which fast, character? really strong, and he can counter. Marth. Mm-hmm. There's Marth and Roy from Fire Emblem. Oh, Fire Emblem, yeah. We got to the okay. point where, like, it was a, with my group of friends back in the day, you were seen as a, okay, ha- like, kind of pat on the head. Oh, you're using yeah. Marth? Okay. And then we would try to crush ever who, whoever <laughs> had Marth because it just didn't require as much skill to play that character. So we all were like, at first, pl- everybody plays Marth. Yeah. He's a, and he's a fun character. But... That he just, of, he's too good. It's like spamming like Hadoukens in Street Fighter. Like you're just yeah. keeping them at distance the whole time. Or if you're Sub Zero in some oh, of the. Oh, yeah. You just freeze them. Yeah. And go do, up do, there. Do, do, do. Yeah. Sub Zero, you can just keep freeze. He can do like the after image freeze thing too. But there was weird combos. Like I thought Scorpion in some of the games could like basically teleport and go in oh, yeah. and kick them or something like that. And Game developers, when they make OP characters, or like Raiden could fly at the guy. Oh, yeah. Doing the shotgun. Oh, no, 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 yeah. No, 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 you just keep flying. So that becomes weird because that becomes more like a really good spam combo you can use over and over yeah. again. And yeah, it gets in our topic we had last time a little bit of some weird combinations. But yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap. For sure. And cheap moves. I just thought it was an interesting idea where they're in combat, there's some cheap moves. Who would ever use cheap moves in training? Yeah. <laughs> so I was actually curious if D&D had the same thing. Cheap moves? Oh, it's not so much cheap, but there's definitely like broken combinations that people can do oh, okay where it's i'm not calling out my friends but i'm calling you out right now hopefully you're listening to this podcast but like i have one friend that's like combining like a barbarian and a fighter and a wizard and a cleric like mm. weird crazy multi-classing some strange but parents it's just, well, that's where it's like <laughs> it's like how did you ever learn to be a wizard i don't know i found a book it's like just weird like background type stuff I'm kind of not great at any of it though because then that would no, be a the idea is that a jack of all trades character. that's how it should be but yeah. the problem is sometimes the mechanics can break okay coming over where like well, if i put this in here now i can combo yeah. this bro you made a dragon this. ball c character yeah it's like it just doesn't work too well so everyone just groans sometime when you're min maxing it's just like 
your break the mecha- game mechanics versus the whole like I just like for myself I'm just like a straight wizard right now which sounds as classic as D&D as it comes but just a straight wizard cool. just if you everything. think about the, that was the care the care and time to create these different classes yeah. was probably put into those main ones right it's just the idea that I think multi-classing is more like you can be two you could be at something similar if you're a barbarian and you're being more nimble or whatever you might be like a monk or something it's something very yeah. similar versus oh I guess this barbarian's gonna be a wizard now and now they're gonna be a ranger and it's the game should break at that point, but... I think that's where there should be some type of a leveling system that, like, keeps the character balanced if you're going to do something crazy like that. But anyways, yeah, I'm off the rails. The I'm idea is that some of the rails. high levels of I'm that crashing, point... Crashing, sliding on the ground. <laughs> I am bashing into trees. I know, I'm hard now because I want to keep on this D&D topic, D- but we have a very core topic we're going to talk about, I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. Well, we should just tease the topic and... <laughs> go back tease to... it, never come back no. to it. This but is yeah. like whole This is actually thing. a good segue, though. Yes. Because we're talking about sassy moves in jujitsu. I like sassy moves better than like a cheap shot. Yeah, like they're just sassy. Nasty, kind of yeah. like sassy. And I figure we could rate it on a scale of one, two, three, or four. You know, I like it because there's no middle value. Four being max sass. Did you happen to hear the last podcast that remember we said we were going to make like a sound effect for a hot take? Oh, I didn't listen. Yeah, did I, I, I didn't I get put to the a, sound. I put a sound for the hot oh, take. Oh, I didn't know you did. And I, and I can't remember what the sound was off the top no. of my head, but it was something funny. I listen to ours like a little bit sometimes, yeah. but not the whole episode. Just check audio just, and stuff, yeah. yeah. I was, I'm, I'm here. I was there already, <laughs> just to make sure that but I But I would just imagine one being like cold and four being like hot and sassy. Yeah. So yeah, four four is max sass and one is... It's not, not bad. It's just like, hey, we're doing a combat activity so at what, the end of what, the day. What would you define as a sassy technique? Not so much a manifestation of it, but what's the purpose of a, let's say, of a, a weird tactic or an odd How would tactic? you define it? Yeah. like a, I think it's like something where it causes some pain. Pain. And okay. it's not as clean, but you still get to where you want to get sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting. Some, it's like discomfort or pain, You know, what, but like, it's not like directly going to finish somebody it's not like a submission no i would say there's some submissions that are sassy too oh uh, yeah i would say maybe like a lot of them it's just, are just it's not sassy. clean i think would be the way to think about it okay it's not crisp and clean so the like, rear choke is as clean as it gets right sure cleanest technique in the yeah, game it gets it gets sometimes gets a little sassy well i guess if someone puts their chin down and stuff but if you have a yeah, sink a sunk too. in rear naked choke well, though sometimes you can get the forearm across the neck too yeah like you see some gory ryan once he goes from the front or mickey musumechi like he'll go in the front yeah and just well, full on i wouldn't neck, say that's a super crush. that's a sassy one then it's sassy yeah it's but i would say like a sassy. classic rear naked oh, choke sure. locked yeah. up hand behind the head clean as you get that's true that is the least I'll sassy move in the game mm-hmm. okay so here we go. Let's do it. I'm I'm coming out of the gates hot here. <laughs> Twister. Oh. Twister. Sassy. Not sassy. One through four. We'll give it a one. Give it a one? Yeah. It's not that sassy. Mm. So the Twister, for context, is basically the lower on the sassy scale moves for a spine submission in Jiu-Jitsu. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Because there is a sassy, I think is a sassy spine submission that people do mm. so i'll keep that in the okay. back of my mind you, so you <laughs> give it a one mind. i give it a one because it's legit the person is stuck in a position yeah and you can scale it at that point i would agree with that plus what's coming yeah. if you know what a twister is well, you're gonna be like oh crap oh crap if you're and passing you could... around your head and the person's stuck in that kind of lockdown position and you're going uh, like you're grabbing around the head like they know it's gonna happen yeah so it's just like discomfort at that point so yeah. I, I would give it a one. I think that's fair because it doesn't like snap right on either. It's just I, I would one, say two, three, four, there's five, a six, sassiness too of like mockery, you mm-hmm. know, like our good friend Jordan, like can choose to mock me in wrestling and do weird pins to me. I'm like, come on, man. Like this, this is horrible. <laughs> like it's amazing at the same time what he can do. But there's some moves where it's if you want to like, actually I was talking to Jordan about this too. Like you can hit sassy moves in wrestling. Um, what's the most embarrassing move you could hit with in wrestling? Like he was... Boston Crab? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so he's talking about like some of those like cradles and pins. But So I think a twister is dubbed one of the more difficult submissions to get. So if you catch it on somebody, mm. I should say it's embarrassing, but it's... Not like a buggy choke. Well, it's, yeah, it's like you're not like the most straightforward, like an arm bar or trying to like, all right, I, that happens all the time. But like a twister is... Ugh. Yeah, you think of, up I can a think of, long time ago. I can think of one that comes to mind, but okay. it's like one time that was like... I think it was embarrassing for the person, but I won't mention that here. But mm-hmm. there's there's times where it can be, it's not sassy as far as an application, but I think sometimes it's sassy. It, it's like a three or four if you want to prove a point on somebody mm. to show how dominant you are. So That's I think fair. there's a psychological sassiness <laughs> and a discomfort sassiness is a one. 
I'll mm. take it. I'll take it as a one. Okay. I, I would agree with that. That's a one. That's you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would say one. Sweet. Okay. I will go to the next one unless you have it, but I'm going to say the no, next no, one. Yeah, do the next one. Is a can opener. So do you know what a can opener is? I feel like that's in the gi, isn't it? So no, I'm, I'm thinking a paper I'm, cutter. I'm in closed guard. Okay. So I'm in your closed guard. Okay. And I'm like, wow, Matt's got the most amazing closed guard on the planet. Thank you. <laughs> this is, we're talking theoret- <laughs> theoretical here. <laughs> I take both my hands behind your head and I fold your chin to your chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's sassy. That is a four. You'd say that's a four. Can opener is a four. That's got to be hard to hit because you have your frames in between you and them. You could frame on your own head. So if I, yeah, so if you put your hands to your head, maybe, but it's, but if I sit back on my heels and I just crank it backwards and then your legs pop open, the idea, okay, so mm. sometimes the sassiness for me is it's a tactic, like there's other viable options, but you choose to do something that causes a fair amount of pain and discomfort mm-hmm. on top of that tactic that you just did, the person will feel the repercussions of it after the roll, the next day, the day after, and things like that. And it increases the sassiness if it gets more to, I shouldn't say more damaging spots of your body. Yeah. But like maybe a wrist and an ankle can be like, oh, you're hurting sassy. the ability to train. But like your neck. Yeah, don't mess or with your spine. That's why you say your spine before, but like a neck, it's like, so sometimes the, the can opener is, I would just be. I, it would turn up the sassiness level on my end for rolling that person if they oh, yeah. tried to can opener me. Like, it would just be like, it would be like, they'd go one level down of respect for me. It'd be like, really? You're trying to can opener me? Like, then I'm hunting up a little higher with yeah. them right now. So, I actually had a moment not too long ago where something kind of sassy if, happened. And it gets worse if they're higher belts. Oh, yeah. If it's a white belt who's freaking you know. out, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. go, I get it. You're freaking out. Yeah. They're like cross facing hard or who, something. Who taught you that? But I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, no. I was going to say, I actually had one of those moments not too long ago. Where there was a little bit of sass. Yeah. I, I think it was unintentional. Yeah. And I got angry. <laughs> I got angry. I didn't show it, but I got angry. That's, I don't know why people don't like rolling with me. Everyone likes rolling with Matt, but Matt's like, he, just, he turns it up. He gets, I, I, I did. I, I, that was the first time in a long time I've turned it up. That's, it was that's funny. For a split second. And it worked out well. Yeah. I can only count my hands the time I've turned it up on, on people. Yeah. Like, just, I shouldn't say Super Saiyan mode, but something yeah. that hit. Move, Luke, Luke can always tell that story too. Move a little one, faster. one time I turned it up on him, I just got more frustrated at myself like oh. i was getting owned by him and i just decided i just had one of those days i just like, screw it and i just went we're going bro yeah i went super saiyan 4 and just blasted through for a moment he goes whoa what was that and i'm like i'm sorry i'm yeah. not sure why i just oops. every now and then that's important to do i think yeah. it, it, i guess it's probably better than when you're both in agreement that you're both going super saiyan that's true and trying your hardest <laughs> yeah let's do this because it's one thing to jump it on somebody if they're trying their right. hardest and then you try yours that's okay but if you just ju- if you're the first to play that card that's that's sassy that's it that's especially if you're right more there. experienced than them yeah okay next one because we got to keep moving here how about a nogi ezekiel oh buddy one to four what so let's say? see ones here so there's an, another move or name for this move i think punch choke i actually had that on the list here too i think it's similar <laughs> see i always thought punch choke was like over the esophagus as were nogi ezekiel i uh, actually where's it going actually good point I was so, saying, so size I, to the carotid so is a punch choke. I'll right. say the two differences. I'm not sure. Punch choke, I would say, is making a fist. Yeah. I would say it's, it could Maybe go against the, the same. carotid, but I have seen people do the fist over the throat as well. I would say fist over the throat is max ass. Yeah. If you do a chop over the throat, it's uncomfortable too, but the fist, I think, adds a little bit more pressure. If you grab your forearm and, that sounds funny, punch the carotid with it, I don't think that's, yeah. Maybe that's like a two on the sass scale. It's not anything I would major. Say, I would actually not even put a punch ch- choke style Ezekiel I, even on the sass scale. If you had to, I don't think it's. I think it's a technique sassy. you could do sassy. Okay, so so if you turn it up, it's going across over the throat. It gets very clean in the gi. The gi you can make an Ezekiel yeah. very clean. Like you can lean and do yeah. a chop. Like it's very clean. But no gi Ezekiel, or let's say no gi. Chop choke, punch choke. Yeah, chop, yeah. Over the throat, that's... Ugh. Okay, so I would rate that as a... Maybe like a two or three. Two. I get weird with sometimes the sassiness because... So the problem with that choke is that if you don't have good, strong base underneath, you're very susceptible to a kipping escape. So usually that's why I don't tell people to do it too often because if someone's like yourself, very good at kipping escape, all their weight's coming forward. So it lightens up their lower body yeah and it makes the kipping way easier that's true so it's you can if i get caught with it in my mind i go i should have kipped or i should have done something better so if i got caught with it it's fine but 
I guess doing it against someone brand new who doesn't really know too much about it and they're mm. coughing and hacking, I think that's more sass. Yeah, that's not good. If you have better options, if you can't on do it clean. Inexperienced people with like arm locks and arm triangles and things like that versus just going like punch Joe. It's like, yeah. I, th- I think I would say across the throat is sassy mm-hmm. just because you're like crushing something. And that's, you know, no, I would say that's more sassy. But I would say if you get the neck, the ch- punch right on the carotid and yeah. you have a good bite on the other side of the neck, that's a clean choke. I think I remember I tried something like that with Luke. Remember we talked about the uh, the grip? Yeah. For, uh, going underneath or whatever. I think and that I, one's sassy. I was trying to do it on Luke because I was trying in theory of trying to make it cleaner. I was yeah. trying to see if I could find a, a clean way to do it. And I was starting at Luke and Luke's, did I make you upset? Or <laughs> something like that. Like he was so like confused. I was going for a weird tactic mm. that kind of was, like you said, sassy. And I'm just like, Oh no, I'm trying to make this clean. I'm trying to see if there's a clean way to to do this. I th- so yeah, punch from the side with a good bite is clean. Because then you're not even touching the throat. Did like I, did a, I show you the north south variation choke that we were playing with the other day? You did already, didn't you? North south choke? Yeah, where you do the arm triangle thing? No. Oh, which one was it? Oh, oh sorry, that was like that weird Darce one. Yeah. I was playing. No. I found a very efficient way to finish the north south choke. <gasps> But I don't know the sassiness level. It gets maybe more throaty or whatever. But right, well, it's like later. you should have had your hands down type of thing. Yeah. So I'll that's show, good. I'll show it that. That later. actually brings up a good point too, though, with uh, Nogi Ezekiel's. I've been practicing in them a little bit just because you have to have some deterrent to keep people's hands up too. Sure. That's a good, good point. Because or else then they have just a huge amount of... It goes, it goes back know. to the whole you have to be really good at it. Because if you're not really good at it, then I got my hands at your hips. Yeah. Elbow escaping, kipping escape. So the only time your hand should come up like that is if you know you're going to close the deal. Yeah. That's I a good point. So. That's my That's a good point. Okay, next one. This one might not even be on the scale. It, this one actually has a lot of variegation, I, I'll okay. say. Just a classic guillotine. Mm. Cause it, and I put this here because it can so easily become a very crushy, sassy move. I think maybe like a one, two. Yeah. Two, one, one, two. Oh. I would say this one could be any of them. It could be one or a four. I'm thinking, well, so what would constitute a four? Where you put your forearm right in their throat or doing like a gooseneck guillotine right into their... You're saying th- four th- is like purposeful, like they know they're just crushing your... Yeah, doing bite. a goose... If you do a gooseneck guillotine on someone and then yeah. you're trying to lift them at the same time... Sure. Come on. Mm. It's that's effective. Good, that's a good point. But it's also very rough. I would say assassiness level goes up if they know they're just full yeah. on going for a pain... Yeah. Versus if you're trying to get it deep and you're trying and you're pulling on it. If I know they're dropping the elbow and they're try- it feels like they're trying to make it clean and I get pinched or neck or whatever, yeah. I, don't, I don't really care. But yeah. it's it, like I said, it's all in the intention. Yes. I think some of the sassiness, like you just mentioned before, if look at a sassy move, but it, it didn't feel intentional. I think there's, it scales too if you, like, you don't feel it's intentional. I think there's a mix in sassiness when it's intentional versus desperate. That's a good point. Desperate is maybe someone's a little bit inexperienced or whatever, and they're just like, I'm just going to do this kind of weird it's tactic. A, a lack of care on your training partners. Yeah, yeah, because they're wanting to win more than your well-being. It's like that move you see sometimes in Nogi where people will be in a collar tie, and then they try to, like, twist their elbow down. The overhook on the, the tie. And they just do it, but they do it so fast. It's like, yeah. an, funny enough, an esteema lock, which was on this. We're this fighting, year. Matt. Either got to be eaten or <laughs> <to> eat. <laughs> This when someone like? that's their first move, <laughs> it's come on, man. Like, I don't know. Now, I, I, we're speaking from a hobbyist perspective. It's that's something we need to, especially since you're talking about uh, competing sometime soon and being in that scene. That you, it yeah. gets people do it. Uh, I I would I, say oh, yeah. my hot take is that you'll see more of that at a white and blue belt level of weird, sassy moves. Yeah, purple and browns like some of it dissipates a little bit. There's creative moves, but there's not like. Ooh, I wonder if you have this one, the whole like elbow inside, close guard. Is that on your sassy list? Oh, where you like start dr- putting Driving your elbow, elbow. elbow. Actually, yeah. yeah. I wrote elbow down here at the bottom. Boom. What, what was elbow for? Just elbow. When you're in, in somebody's closed guard and someone starts just driving their elbows into your thighs. Yeah, I would say. It's a little say, sassy. I would you say, say still it's get sassy, but sometimes it's just funny. Like you're really trying to elbow me right now. I feel bad whoever taught you like that was a tactic to do. Yeah, because like, you're, 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 you're so close to getting arm triangle too. Sorry, like triangle. I think it's interesting because those tactics, like the elbow, it's rarely that you see that it's like intuitive. Like someone taught you to say, all right, we're going to push away the legs and drop this elbow. It's, I don't know who taught you that, but yeah, if you do that, don't do that. 
it's well, way better moves to do. Than yeah, it's funny. It's, it's a less dropping. effective move, too. And it just hurts your opponent a little bit. I will say a move that's not sassy at, at all is pressure points. You go behind the head, <laughs> small intestine 11, oh, and God. everything falls apart. That, that's actually... Shits who don't work. <laughs> I'm glad that pressure points exist because yeah. then I can tell if someone knows how to fight or not. It's true. If they're telling me about their pressure point yeah. powers, then I'm like, oh, go, well, good. They don't know how to fight. Golf ladder six is all you need. Good. To get, I'm get glad this guy part. has never had to fight. <laughs> this is fantastic. Imagine if that was a thing. It'd just be like... Yeah, because you're giving them an extended <laughs> arm usually, too. Yeah. Think about that. There's the one that they did in... You know, do you ever have that in, like, middle school when people figured out that if you push on someone's, like, temple, it hurts? Oh, yeah. Guys were doing that to each other, and it... <laughs> dude, I would get so mad, and I would try not to show it, but in my head, I wanted to just punch that person in the face with every ounce of ability that I had, just because it was just like, why are you doing that? And, yeah. and we're not even fighting. It would just be like, dude, check this out. You know? I would love to have someone who's so fully convinced doing that, and then have a role with them, and have no clue that's what they do, and see how effective it is on me. It wouldn't be. It well, is I'm, not effective. I'm saying how effective? Zero to, if there's suddenly like One out of 10. One out of 10. Point. Like, I don't know. One out of 10, I'm, unless this, they this have come, your head This comes cradled. more curiosity, Matt. Yeah. Have you rolled against a pressure point master? No. So you don't know. <laughs> yeah. I guess. It's more of a curious kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe we should I'm not call saying that out. it couldn't hurt a lot if they're like better at jujitsu than you and then they started no, pressure no, I don't something. want any jujitsu experience. They don't need jujitsu experience if they can pressure point people. Yeah. I want to roll one of those energy ball guys. Can you punch? So maybe we should do that. We'll just start pulling in some poor <laughs> martial artists who don't have any actual combat experience, and then we can just get start, our YouTube views up. Yeah, and just be bullies oh, on the funny. man. We're we're actually like pretty now, nice guys. Now we're <laughs> now we're switching over. Now we're being sassy. Yeah, we're being the sassy ones. That's true. Oh, All no, right, we have to we have it. to check our sassy. I know, I'm feeling that. Okay, I would, here's the here's one that's a, a contentious topic between us. Wrist locks. This is one of the few things, I, I think, think where we sassy. stand on opposite mountains. Where's your opposite? Do you think it's sassy? No. I don't think it's sassy either. Oh, you, I, I thought you were going to say they're sassy. I think a wrist lock, okay, so a, a controlled wrist lock is legit. If I'll say... Match it, not as cool. I'll say not as many people are good as to isolate the wrist lock. Hmm. So Gordon had a video about this a while ago that he said most people do wrist locks. I'm demonstrating this to Matt right now. Like just basically grabs a wrist with no elbow control. Yeah, you got to control the elbow. Trifle. So you have to be able to like wedge like your ribs or your body or something behind the elbow, and then you can wrist lock. So part of my issue is that I'm not rolled with many people that could isolate my elbow and then wrist lock me. So there's I'm, a good one from guard. Yeah, I never get upset about it. I think sometimes though the body can be pretty wriggly. That sometimes people go for wrist lock, very similar to leg locks, because they feel like they can't hold the limb and they just. Send, kind of rip and go for it. So sending it as max ass. You need a ashigurami of the the arms. Yeah, and then isolate me in place, and then get a wrist lock on me. Yeah, I guess the tricky thing is if you know it's coming. Yeah. Wrists are actually if you're flexing, your forearm muscles are pretty strong. So I only had hard. one person in all my time rolling ever like successfully do wrist locks on me. It was I got a, wrist lock bad ones. Did you? Yeah, was it actually, controlled or was it fast? I think it was actually by accident. The guy was doing it. I don't get upset. He, he by acted it. like it wasn't anything at this school. But I was at a different place, rolling. Yeah. And the guy was much more experienced than me. And I was like posting or something. And it just, and I was like, ah, my wrist. And he was like, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> and I was just I like, dude, do that. no, you didn't. <laughs> you did not. Like, ouch. Because you can tell when someone's, say they like readjusted to clamp something. Yeah. And then you did it. And then you'd be like, ah, you did mean to do that. Versus just. We, I think I'd give respect to someone if they caught me a real slack with control. And they were able to do that multiple times. Oh, yeah, that'd be legit. Versus I'm like, desperate uh, right here. I'm isolating your arm. And then if I was in their perspective going, oh, I could feed for a straight arm lock or Kimura, and they're just reaching over and trying to just crush my wrist right away. It's almost like a toe hold with the, arm, with the hand. Yeah, and it's similar to the toe hold. It's just control. It just, I, I, it's, to me, it's more desperation if you've got to just jump for something, especially when you see guys like Gordon Ryan who can take their time submitting people yeah. to the top of the world. I'm so glad he, did, he has that ability. And that kind of shows the pathway for a lot of these things. But it's funny because I'm thinking about him and there's, he doesn't really do too many sassy moves, but no. I'm thinking like there's some sassy moves I've seen on who's number one for sure. Okay. We got to keep rolling here. We're going to run out of time. Slicers. Bicep, hand, uh, calf. I used to think they were sassy, but uh, now I don't think they're sassy. Or I, I would say they're basically like a one on the sassy level, mostly because there's some people who I just, okay, same 
issue I have with the wrist lock. There's some people who grab it and they just send it to the moon. Like they just like, Rah! like they just yeah. full on go into it. And it's the same issue I have with like foot locks or whatever. There's some people who just like blast into moves. And I think most movements that you blast into is bad. So mo- a lot of times I've had calf slicers and bicep slicers done. It's just like, people just squeeze so much into it. And it's just insane versus bicep slicers. I can put a slow pressure on for someone to realize that they're stuck and then get it. Same with my, our favorite now, our deli ham sandwich. Yeah. That we do. And again, it's that can, you you lock the hips in place, they move around, they feel like they're stuck, and then you go, one, two, three, four, five, and you can catch it. So yeah, I don't think they're sassy. It's if uh, you send it, yeah, you're on my sass list for sure. All right. Similar, there's a similar theme between some of these. <laughs> okay. I'm hearing it now, which is actually good. Okay. How about the Estima lock? Oh, you can probably Estima. Oh, yeah. So Estima lock. Most of the time, once it's applied, it's sassy. I would say it's a ooh, hot take, like a two or three. Okay. I thought you were going to put it as a four. It's it's there. I would say if someone catches it, there's not many people that will catch it and slowly apply it. I think most people I see do catch it like a high step or high pummel over yeah. and apply it. The one notable one, Gianni Grippo, I think. Gianni Grippo has something like that where he caught it and just ripped it across. And I think Plac- Placido. Placido, uh, yeah, it got got it ripped on him Whoa, once in, in a competition or something like that. There's just not there's not really any control with it. You're doing it like an open guard retention, and someone catches it. There's no control with it. It's the same equivalent grabbing an ankle and just going backwards with it. So, I would say it's it has a high injury rate. Let's put it that way. So I would tell people if you're going for that, like you have to find better ways to control it. But I think if you want it successfully. And th- take care of your partner. If you're doing competitions, I can see, but I've seen too many people get their legs ripped off with a steamer locks. Even good competitors too. So it doesn't. You're not really treating the re- the competitor with respect too, because I think much like Gordon Ryan understands that the person he's working with is also a professional competitor that makes a living off of it. So it's if you can finish someone without damaging someone, I think that's a total side of control. And yeah, respect. that's the bigger flex. Yeah, bigger flex. That's a better way to put it. Okay. Here we go. Jumping over to, here's an interesting one. A blast double. Uh, oof. Not sassy if you know the person has a wrestling background. I think sassy if you don't know they have a wrestling background. Hmm. So fair. let's say I could I could name a couple people in here, especially if I saw someone do a blast double to them, I'd be talking with them. Yeah. Because the idea is that part of the blast double effect is that also people have to know how to fall yeah so the blast movement itself is fantastic it's beautiful it's amazing it's the coming to the ground part same with i've seen many places too doing judo or throw and it's like you can clearly tell this person has no stand-up experience and you just rip them to the ground yeah so i would say it's sassy if they don't have experience with it like you or sorry you don't have a measurement of their experience with yeah it. First, someone's like, oh, I'm just going to start standing and we'll just see what happens. And you just blast through them. I guess it, once again, depends on their experience level. But if they have some wrestling experience or whatever and, and are willing to engage a stamp or maybe at least a blue belt, let's say, then I would say it's okay. Okay. I'd be okay with that. Like at that point, they know how to fall. They've seen takedowns. They've seen those kind of things. So they'd be okay with that. But I think someone, if you don't know their experience and you're like, hey, nice to meet you, bam. The movement itself is can be fine. But the problem is no one recognizes that person has to know how to fall too. Yeah. So if you go by surprise, there's a chance they could bounce their head off the mat or, you know. I think, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, that if they don't. Sense. Yeah. And it's a tricky one because it is like one of those really effective things, it seems. And yeah. I've hit it once mm-hmm. because I was just like, oh, I'm going to try and do this. Yeah. And it was like effortless it, just because it was like, oh, it sure. just timed. Yeah. That's all. But I felt bad, like mid execution of it i was like oh man like i could i could care know, less if someone doubles somebody. me like it's just part of the game i think it depends because i'm basically like a fifth degree black belt when it comes to break falling yeah. <laughs> 20 years of martial arts is i'm good with that but someone who's like a couple months in and, and it's not too experienced it's, it's the same thing we talked about speed mm-hmm. if you have to go fast on someone who's brand new it's you don't have to yeah. but obviously if someone was a little bit trickier you get into it fine it's totally all good I'm yeah okay it's with like that. On the topic of breakfalls, it's like that one time you were in a plane and then it was crashing and then what you did, 
You just broke fall when you hit the ground. And you were good I, to go. I think so. That's how I survived my motorcycle crash. I just yeah. broke fall. Break fall. Yeah. Yeah. Tuck well, and roll, tuck baby. And, tuck, tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Jocko Willick had a really funny quote once that, well, he's got a lot of funny ones, but he was just like, guys in the back of their head, they, they know this is ridiculous, but they almost feel like if I'm in this plane and it goes down, I just got to roll, baby. Yeah. I'll just roll when it hits the ground and I'll be good. There's a trick. And, you just wait until yeah. the last second. Then I'm going to jump. Just roll right out. It's, yeah. <laughs> I just jump right you know, before it hits the ground. It's funny, though. I'm going to look for a soft spot. I'm going to roll. Yeah. And it's funny because you can tell, obviously, out. he's a very practical man. Yeah. So he, it's in the your, head, your head. Yeah, yeah. in the back yeah. of your head, there's, there's a less than 0% chance you could <laughs> pull can do this, this off. <laughs> and I laughed so hard because I fly a lot. And that was a thought I had at one point where I'm like, what if I just like roll? I'm like, I know it's a slim chance. But it's better than nothing. Well, think about if you're falling from a plane and there's a forest underneath you. There was a story of a woman that fell off an airplane and got struck by lightning and survived, hit the ground. She's a god. Yeah. So, but I'm thinking like trees. Like, She's you a think god you could, like, and just happen to have all the for the trees as, as you're falling down and somehow like, I don't know. I don't know. I think, like I said, Who less knows? than 0% chance, less than 1% <laughs> chance you'll pull it that off. That would be crazy. I survived falling off a plane. That's my icebreaker. Okay, let's see. We should probably do one more. Oh, we're all good, yeah. And call it. Time. Okay, what week. about a suplex? Oh, sh- 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 I guess yeah. it depends because, okay, so I have a very strong bias with it. I have a decent rib injury that comes back here and again, and it's because I got suplexed unbeknowing to me when we weren't in a... Uh, we weren't yeah, I just in, saw that. Yeah, we weren't in a it. competitive match. He was just messing around with me. Oh. Uh-huh. And then it was like a young wrestler, and he just suplexed me backwards, and I crunched my ribs. Ugh. And it was just like, yeah, it was an injury that's been on and off for 20 years plus since that. It's like a bad suplex is really dangerous, but I, a good suplex, maybe less. I think at that point, if someone's behind me at that point, either I'm throwing myself forward in like a four-point stance, or I'm just like working my hips down. Like I'm, something's going to go. Like I'm not going to stand with that person if they're going backwards with it. Because I'm sure there's safer ways to apply a suplex, possibly, like more on the shoulders and yeah, something like that. But um, again, I think the sassiness with some of these bigger movements has to be done on people who are used to those crashes. Yeah. They're used to going backwards on their shoulders or going like they're used to break falling. Like, judo people, you can whip them as hard as you want. And they're so trained at moving their body to turn yeah. into a certain you see spot. some guys in the Olympics and gals, like when they stand up after some of those throws, you're like, oh, man. Yeah, but they know how the, they don't, don't have, even have the wind knocked they out. They know how to break fall. There's a beautiful part about that. I remember there was a, I never really got into any sort of fight yourself defense in school, but I remember I used to play like touch football and I was like pretty amazing getting to the, the quarterback. And this one guy was upset that I got to the quarterback and touched him. And as I was walking away, he full on shoved me from behind. And this was eighth grade before I knew any martial arts. And I just tuck and rolled and I kept walking. Mm, I have no why flex. I just kept walking. Yeah, I just, like, my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to keep walking. I also hear people go, oh, and I just, at me, like, in a way that I just kept going. But it was instinctive. I just saw the ground and I rolled. Mm. And I was like, kind of like the Jocko thing. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to roll. roll yeah, but it's roll. like one of those things where it's, if it's instinctive, I think if your body takes over and you know how to roll, like, that's fine. So suplex, I'm not sure what's a safe way. Maybe that's a Jordan question. Yeah. To either A, apply it, or B, defend it. I'd say it's sassy because there's a lot of other options. It's really beautiful to watch. I think they're cool. This is what we're getting at, Matt, though. Like, the sassiness is going, you could do these other things, but I'm going to stay and do this. Yeah. Like, that could be weird. This is a, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's a weird topic, isn't it? So there's a choice there, you know? I think some sassy movements or techniques is because there's lingering effects afterwards. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like how, how many damaging them. There's only one sassy technique that I can think of that doesn't have an effect afterwards, but it's, it feels mm. like it's sassy. What? I'm not sure if it's on your list, but the mouth covering. Oh, I forgot about that one. So mouth covering. That one's good for friends. You can do that one with friends. Yeah. I see in competitions too. If Someone... you did the mouth cover on me, I'd probably laugh. Yeah. I might even tap to it, but yeah. I would just be like, <laughs> like, but it's funny because when you think about you all the SOB. different ways we choke people, just literally putting your hand over their mouth. Yeah. Is, that's not a thing. You know, it's, oh, no, I can't use my mouth to breathe and things like that. So it seems sassy. I think it's coming in more and more. So I wouldn't be surprised if someday I was, I'm using that as like a way you could bait your partner to turn, just putting your mm. hand over. I think sometimes sassiness is also another word for, wow, that seems like 
way too effective and an easy way to make to get a victory. Like you think leg locks were sassy in the past? Oh, you just can go for a leg lock because it was too easy, maybe mm. or I don't know, like to grab. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like the sassiness. So if I got you in mount and I just covered your mouth and just held you right there, like how would you feel? I'd mermaid out of that baby because <laughs> <laughs> you're waist forward. Just any spot I'm gonna be at jiu jitsu, gonna be bomb half guard, gonna cover Matt's mouth. It's just like I might have figured out actually a weird way to prevent the mermaid though. Yeah. I'll show you later. Ooh. We'll see if I can get I pulled it off once, and I, it actually did work. Okay. It's we'll just see. a little funky. I like the names to think about the mermaid. That's funny. You know what's funny? That other night that uh, Jordan was talking about the wizard, and he did the whole, like, Arthur's fist. Meme. Yeah, that was awesome. I love that stuff because that stuff sticks for me. Yeah, like, same. It's always, like, weird stuff same. where it's, like, Arthur's fist. And yeah. It goes versus, oh, details, hand, and blah, blah, like. Same with jiu-jitsu. It's like same thing, but if you like have this like funny visual, like you'll keep it in the back of your mind. I like the fact that we're all a bunch of just dorks. <laughs> it's awesome. That's the best part. <laughs> it's fun. I like it, it helps with the learning process oh, when you're also a dork. You're also not taking and yourself you can, seriously so yeah, much. And just, or, or, I'm going to Arthur's fist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could be in no, misinterpreted like we're, too. Willer's here. This is just going to yeah. destroy. Yeah. Well, well, it's, no, it's like Arthur's fist right here. Yeah, right? we do memes at each other. <laughs> By the way, Arthur's fist. That sounds for like, a wizard. Sounds like it doesn't go somewhere else. Instagram stuff for us to be like, we're going to do the Arthur's Fist variation. And people are like, oh, what's that? And now it's like catchy. And You could always put like a snapshot of the meme over when Jordan's like teaching it. And be like, yeah. just for a second. So Subliminally fun. message, kind of like. Psh, psh, psh. Maybe we need to recreate the angle and stuff and use like Jordan's hand. Yeah, that'd be you funny. Know, like, and just switch it. Yeah. Or that, give him Arthur's hand. Yeah. While he's doing it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and it, but it's like laced Oh, put it on there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so Jordan's on. got Arthur's we'll, arm. We'll do something. We'll get a video of him doing it. That'd be funny. I like that idea. It'd be cool. Arthur's Fist. I think we got a little time here, so you yeah. can get another one in or something. Okay, like okay, okay. You know what? I've asked you a bunch. Do you have one to ask me? Let's do it here. Three finger grips. Sassy or not sassy? Grabbing people's three fingers? Yeah. I don't think it's sassy. And here's why. Okay. You've got three. Actually, funny, four is easier it's to legal. hold than three. I don't, I don't care about that. You can wiggle out of it. If someone's trying to submit me using my fingers, it's a little bit like... I'll whisper on my drink. I'll be a little bit like, bro. But at the same time, I think we come back to, they're putting so much focus on your hand. I Either A, I'll just tap. Or B, I'll just make a fist. <laughs> you know? All right, I got a really good one. Huh? A very solid cross face. Like a shoulder of justice cross when I, face. When you say solid... I'm saying because a solid cross face, I would say you're not okay, using no, no, all no. your energy, okay, like no, a technically this is, solid this is one. Like someone who's trying to make your life uncomfortable with the mm. cross face. I would say that's sassy. I would say mm. I'd honestly even put that at a two because you're turning their jaw. Yep. And you're forcing them. Yeah. Hard. And, and they're doing it because they're trying to essentially drive you into the ground more than they need to. So it's also not getting to the spirit of what we're trying to do here. Don't right. waste an ounce of energy when you don't have to. That actually maybe is part of it too. But maybe it's effective because they're keeping you away from regarding, possibly. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, if you're giving them the shoulder of justice and it's harder than it needs to be to achieve your goal, yeah, that's sassy. Because who who does that? You know what's funny? Our, the best wrestler we know doesn't do that. Yeah. Again, it's it's the lack of confidence that people feel like I have to give 100% because I don't know what level is enough. Yeah. So they just default 100. That's yeah. funny. I was trying to think that one. Let's see what's here. There's I wonder not... if Finn over there knows any sassy moves. He looks like he's dying on that couch over there. Finn, Finn's natural state is so. He's a I, true teenager. So that's a teenager's we were, natural habitat right there. We were going to flopped on the couch. This anime convention, and I wanted Finn to dress up as Mr. Aizawa. Oh, that would have been good, Finn. Mo mostly because so he's got the long hair, but mostly because he naps and acts like Mr. Aizawa and just lays around. That'd be awesome. So Racerhead's like, legit. I was like, you should look like him. That'd be all right, hilarious. Finn. Do you know any sassy moves? Do you know a sassy move in jiu-jitsu? <laughs> okay, oh, teenager boy. need to ask twice. Yep. Do you know any sassy moves in jiu-jitsu? That's mean. You don't no. know any? How about a I mean, how about go -Go plata? That's I don't a think a go-go plata is sassy. sassy. Just put disgusting. Foot, put your foot across It's just neck. gross. <laughs> I guess it depends on which foot. Yeah. Whose foot you're bringing across your yeah. throat? Just gross putting their foot by. But it's very effective. I won't hold it against somebody if they go go plot to me. I'm just trying to go through like my list of like different positions of like sassiness. Oh, okay, last one. This will be our last one. Oil check. <laughs> that's max sass. There's no sass for that, man. No, that's 100% sass. That's, sass. that's as sassy as it gets. Uh, Don't oil check me. Here we go. Ready? All right, what? A 
mm. a close guard somewhat slam, a Ooh. somewhat elevated slam. Ah. This if is... you're intending to slam, that's sassy. If the rules say no slam. If the rules say slam, I think it's not sassy at all. That is a completely legit move then. Okay. I guess that's a good summary right there. I say that because I'm always under the belief that I see them with the UFC too. Like, let's say I'm sprawled out in your guard. I'm just like, I have my hands on the ground forever, weird reason, and you're like koala bearing me right now. Okay. You're just like holding on to me. You're not doing anything, you're holding on. If I start standing up and you're holding on to me, what if I trip and fall and just bounce you? You can tell, like, people do trip. Yeah. Or like when you're in guard, right? When you pull someone back down and you can pull their feet out sometimes a little bit. I was talking with Calvin and Connor the other night because Calvin is definitely hitting the weight room. He was showing me like- Yeah, shout out to Cal. Oh, he's fantastic. So he basically like overheaded, <laughs> brought his friend Connor basically overhead from a triangle. They had a triangle. He just effortlessly picked him up overhead. Yeah. Didn't do anything, but he was like, how look what I can do. And then they came over and they're like, hey, how do you prevent someone from just picking you up? And I was showing like the rope around the ankle and that can lock things in place. I feel if you're able to pick someone up above hips, above your own hips, then it starts as a reset, mm. which gets weird because it's like slams to me get odd because slam also. You know, it's weird though. If you mat return somebody hard, that's not that's a slam saying, though. That's so, not... so if you take someone down, then you're technically like hitting them on the ground, not hitting them, but like you're, there's a, there's a distance, like especially a double, like if you pick them up and their upper body hits the ground, right? So it's a takedown. But it gets weird when you're close guard yeah. and you're coming up. When you're you double like, leg, though, you are you actually hit the ground when they hit the ground, too, though, if you do it right. I guess it depends on if you're just, like, stripping them down to the ground with a triangle choke or if you're, like, going to, like, you're going to double from close guard. Here, here's what like, I'll say. It is a little them. sassy now that I'm going to ba- backtrack a little bit. See, this is what I thought would be a good one to end on. Because the slams. fulcrum, like, the fulcrum's at the hips. Yeah. The end of the lever is your head. Yeah. Your head cause hits the ground first. Like, potentially, like, they're whipping your skull into the ground. Sure. I think that would be sassy in that regard. Mm. If you like are trying to shuck a little bit and they're yeah. like, say like their back would hit the ground. Yeah. Most definitely first. Yeah. I would say that's okay. Yeah. I would also say too, anytime you're picking someone up and they would choose not to be slammed and you bring them down to the ground, if they don't have the full freedom to disengage. Then yeah. that gets weird too. If they can disengage, I think it's a little bit on them too. I never see someone slam from side control. To be in side control, someone's holding them and pop them from side control. Because mm. I think if you elevate up, they're, they're just, just going to yeah, guard and things like blast that. Blast right out of it. Yeah. But cool. Yeah. I think that's from... Yeah, we covered a lot of sassy moves. If anyone knows any sassy moves we did not cover and you thought would be interesting to debate sassiness, you can leave a comment on our podcast. Oh. Have you checked our email recently? Have we had any... Uh, I checked it. I didn't sassy. have anyone. I got in contact with that one family, or she got in contact with me, the one that we had the kid in the... The, oh yeah and so they were asking like oh is a podcast up yet and she must not have listened to our, our recap or yeah whatever and i was like oh i'm sorry but i sent a photo of like them like her and the kid or uh, yeah and the kid and the father on our podcast booth and then um, i'm gonna try to find the video of i had with them too but she seemed interested in it so yeah. that's really cool it was an instructor not father was that yeah i believe it was instructor oh the guy was an instructor yeah i ah, believe so okay yeah cool but yeah that wasn't that, but that was, was cool. cool i like we that. also that was really if nice. they reached out we got to send them the ten dollar bjj fanatics gift card yeah well, well yeah. i'll talk with her too about okay. that because i think maybe they reach out but or an email but this was like through instagram oh also too, follow us on instagram facebook we'll get those podcast ups but on default you guys can find us at the grappling podcast.com and uh, yeah it's just funny, I'm thinking like suddenly pool sharking again with uh, jujitsu. Jujitsu <laughs> sharking. Something. Just like, it's interesting. I think some of those tactics, if we wrap it up here. So if you win with a tactic, like do you, like I had this guy, oh, I, we didn't really talk about this one, but choking over the chin. If you're a higher level belt. Yeah. I think that's okay. Yeah. I think that's right. Because you know what you're doing. You put your chin there on purpose. Yeah. So I would say if you're- You'll never get a If you're more experienced and someone does it over your chin, I would say, yeah. It's on you, buddy. It's on you. Like, I got smashed in, like, an absolute division with it. My mouth was bleeding afterwards. And I'm just like, I didn't complain because that was the only thing I had left. Like, he could have maybe done something a little bit more work to get underneath, but I was already such a bad spot at that point. But, but yeah, chins only stop friends. So if you're in a competitive scene and someone mm-hmm. wants to crush over, you have to expect that. And I'm okay with that. That's yeah. maybe like a two, maybe. I think you can also go against your friends with some of that stuff. 
I just say apologize as you're doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm yes. sorry. Because then they're, they're, they're at least a little bit like prepped for like, it. It should be telling people to say, if you have no options right now and your only option is to tuck your chin, like you should be thinking about tapping a place. Same with having a Kimura behind your back. And it's like, you're just going to hold it there. That's your only option left. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You can expect some pressure coming afterwards. So Totes. cool. We have that. Uh, do we have anything else? We're looking to get some interviews lined up. Yep. We definitely have some topics lined up. So we're going to try and make these at least weekly. Yep. And um, we're going to be trying our first like is, Zoom style one. Yeah. Soon. We're going to try a Zoom one for that interviews. We can as well. start having more guests. Yes. That's just uh, a little more efficient for them. Yeah. Just as always, if you guys have any topics or something you want us to discuss or more discussion about for the Jiu community, grappling community, then just give us a hit. But otherwise, we will see you later.